Hey everybody, it is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Today's Friday, the 15th of January, 2016, and we had another horrific week for equities here. The S&P 500 lost two and a quarter percent, uh, NASDAQ down 3%, uh, biotechs down close to 6%, and oil just continues to get smashed here, now down 20% year to date. And let's take a look at oil first, um, just so I don't forget to do it. But, you know, it looked like maybe we we're going to stabilize here a little bit. We've had had some strong uh, legs lower, first from 50 down to 43, and then from 48 down to 39, and 43 down to 34, and then 38 down to, you know, it looked like maybe 30 was going to hold, but we closed below that. And this is the lowest close if we look at that weekly chart uh, now since, I guess, uh, 2004. So there's no sign to support in oil. And, um, you know, in the past, we have seen that oil can bounce directly dramatically, but uh, I'm more of the uh, mindset that if they don't scare you out, they will wear you out. And there are structural problems with these markets, not just oil, but in all of these markets. So let's take a look then at the S&P 500, which continues to get decimated here. It undercut the August, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, October low. And the next level of significance would be just below uh, that, uh, you know, three, four points lower here uh, of the um, August low. So, um, Let's take a look at and back it up just a little bit here. Each one of these candles represents two days worth of data. I've got a 25-day moving average, which is actually, of course, a 50-day because there's two days in here. Uh, so we're below the declining 50, 100, 150, and 200-day moving average. As we pointed it out, uh, as I've pointed out a few times, you know, we've heard people talking about, you know, the death cross over here and then the golden cross and then the death cross. And it, I'm not here to suggest that, you know, it, it, it fades those. These are longer term uh, uh, signals, if you will, that, that people use. And basically, I find them to be almost useless, just a bunch of noise. They aren't really good for timing. And, and you know, again, we don't look at moving averages as a level of support. We look at it as a potential level of support when we pull back. So there's a lot of misuse of technical analysis. But the fact is, as I stress always, when we have a declining five-day moving average, the intermediate term trend is considered guilty till proven innocent. Yesterday, we closed uh, just below that five-day moving average, and the five-day moving average was declining. I outlined what I thought was a potential scenario for a turn, which would look something like this. But obviously, you know, when we have the market gap lower, it completely obliterated any chance of that. And that's why when the five-day moving average is declining, yeah, you can make good money on these rallies. But to hold them just doesn't make any sense. You can look at the market and say it's down too much. They've been saying that for the last two and a half years in oil, but oil is not down too much if there are still sellers in the market. You can argue about fundamentals. You can say, hey, I buy dips, but this isn't a dip. This is a structural change in the market. We are in a bear market. Yes, we will experience some powerful moves. In fact, some of the most, the, some of the strongest moves that the market experiences are typically found in bear markets. So, you know, those rallies that last, you know, three, four days and go maybe six, seven percent, they get people excited, but they typically bleed back off. We are below all these longer term moving averages and we will be in a bear market for a while. If they don't scare you out, they will likely wear you out. There are, you know, just stocks that are just destroyed in every single sector, every industry, and you know that's the path of least resistance. You have to expect that we're going to have bear markets when we have uh, these large run-ups. They get corrected deeply, and you know, is this one going to halt maybe in here and find support magically? I doubt it. I would think that it's more likely that we see something like this occur over the course of the next year or so. And, and those aren't meant, of course, to be actual projections, but something similar to that is what I would expect that this market would do, because that's the path that they're on currently. Again, there's there's markets destroyed everywhere, um, internationally, commodities, whatever you name it. And when the five-day moving average is declining, it's guilty till proven innocent. These big rallies get, get people excited, but you have to look at them with an eye of 
of suspicion, especially when we still have a pattern, of course, with lower highs and lower lows. We are well below the volume weighted average price year to date. Um, that is also you know, where we've seen a little bit of uh, resistance in there recently. Today, we closed above our VWAP, but if you want to call that a victory for the bulls, uh, down $4.15, $4 uh, I think we'd think, uh, look at things differently. And today was an extraordinarily volatile session. Um, it, it, it was really, you know, all this week, there have been some great opportunities for trades. But, you know, typically when you see a big gap down like this, you would think that we're going to get a rally that uh, it could maybe, you know, hold above the VWAP and get going, perhaps up to a two-day volume weighted average price. But we didn't see that today. So this market remains in trouble. If we get a big gap up on Monday, don't get excited about it. In fact, a gap up on Tuesday because we have a long weekend coming here. So the market remains guilty till proven innocent. If you're going to be involved in this, you have to be a disciplined and skilled trader. You have to look at things with an objective eye. This is not buy the dip. This is not a dip. This is a bear market. The NASDAQ obviously got smashed uh, as well. And we can let's, let's just go back to that SPY for a moment. We can take a look at, you know, uh, this weekly chart. And we can maybe take, you know, if you wanted to say, where would a 38.2% retracement, let's say, of this low take? us. Well, a 38.2% retracement would bring us all the way down towards this uh, 173 level. And again, not a projection, but it certainly seems reasonable. That's just another 10% lower. Why wouldn't that happen? But I think that, again, you need to see you know, a pattern develop where we get a rally and then we continue to see lower highs and lower lows. And it might take a year to get down towards there. It might take six weeks. We simply don't know, which is why I continue to be focused on these shorter term time frames. The NASDAQ also, you know, obviously in a bear market, we had uh, uh, mentioned that two weeks ago when we lost these levels in here, that it was now that these markets are in bearish, uh, bearish markets, that uh, we cannot look for this by the dip mentality any longer. The five day moving average continues to decline in the uh, NASDAQ and it's not going to become neutral in the intermediate term till it gets back above there. But what we want to see for positive intermediate term would be something more like this. And then perhaps we could trade it for a day, two, three days on the long side. But because the longer term trend is still lower, it's it, it's going to be guilty till proven innocent. And this is the market reality you have to live with unless until things change. And they, they aren't going to change quickly, not when we are below the declining 200 day moving average. That's kind of the institutional benchmark that they say, you know, the bulls live above it and the bears live below it. And when it's declining, it says that the big money is getting out of this market. Do not fight them. The Russell 2000 has shown no signs of support. Uh, I had drawn in a uh, trend line uh, earlier in the week that I uh, shared with, I think I might've put it on Twitter even too, but um, you know, that this trend line was a potential level where the market would find support. I was saying, you know, maybe it breaks this. We see a little flush below the trend line, then a bounce. But we don't want to buy because we maybe will see a bounce. And just as I always say, we only know true support after it's actually formed. Until then, there are potential levels. So when we see a potential level of support, such as right in here, what we do is we look to the shorter term time frame and we say, what's the pattern? The pattern remains lower highs and lower lows. What's the direction of the five-day moving average? It continues to be lower. There is no advantage to be buying in there at this perceived level of support because there is no support. It's just a potential area where the buyers may find control. Next week, if we get a bounce, I would expect that all these, you know, that the volume-weighted average price levels for the year-to-date will uh, likely be an area of, of resistance. And, you know, it makes sense, too, because that's where we see prior support support turning into resistance. So uh, this is, again, this is TC2000, the trading, uh, the, the charting platform that I use. They have some excellent tools to make it very easy to see these things. Semiconductors tried to find some support at this prior area right in here, but of course failed. And again, same exact story. We saw that the pattern was neutralizing at best. That is, we didn't even see the five-day moving average flattening out. We still did not breach this pattern 
of the lower highs and lower lows. We want to see higher highs and higher lows. We want to see the market not just shoot up through that level, but do so. How does it get there? If it you know, is to do something like this and then get through there, then perhaps it's a purchase with a, with a stop, though, with a stop underneath here. And risk management, I say it all the time. That's why I had that uh, webinar December 31st. If you haven't seen it, uh, what we can learn from the losers of 2015, go to our uh, alphatrends.net and you know just or just google it losers of 2015 alpha trends um, and you can learn a lot from it biotechs continue to get smashed as well this group is clearly in a bear market and and if you look at some of the components i mean some of these stocks like let's say celgene uh, if you look at celgene you know this is a big top in this stock the bigger the tops the bigger the drops it's tough to see how this is going to get past this prior band of support uh, with any conviction if you look Look at uh, Biogen, uh, Biogen IDEC, by BIIB. Look at the weekly chart. These things are di <clears throat> disastrous. Amgen looks like it's topping out as well. So you, you've got to look at it and say, you know, these, again, are very risky stocks, and they are being treated, treated as risky stocks. That last failed break of that move here uh, was has clearly led from a failed move to a fast and vast move, and it's been below the declining five-day moving average. That five-day moving average, yes, we got above it briefly, but just like I say all the time with a 50-day moving average or anything, it's more important the direction of the moving average than where the, where the stock or that index is in relation to it. So... Um, I, real quick, I also wanted to point out that uh, I've been running a sale on the Alpha Trends annual subscriptions. The gold level is normally $7.99. I'm offering it for $5.99. Silver instead of $5.99 is $4.49. And I'm going to extend that through Monday. So over the long weekend, if you want to start looking at this market with a disciplined everyday approach, then you know, take take a look. And I'm not, you know, it's a no refund policy. I want people who aren't tire kickers. I want people who are going to stick around for a year and learn how to handle good and bad markets. Apple, you know, continues to be a piece of garbage stock. And like I said yesterday, it's not a judgment against the company or their products, but it's a stock in a downtrend. This is what stocks and downtrends are supposed to do. It's supposed to be able, it's supposed to continue to decline. Um, TLT, this is the bonds. The bonds, right, uh, interest rates were raised. Why is the market lowering rates? Bonds go up, yields go lower. But, you know, this is a flight to safety issue. And, and you know, it, it shows again that you can't just follow the news if you're if you're following the news you're going to be late on things just be you know i don't remember where it was but somewhere in here where the federal reserve raised interest rates and what have we done since then we, you know bonds have soared and interest rates being the inverse relationship of course have have failed they've dropped so Bonds are, are rallying here. Um, you know, look at trading news such as CMG. CMG, all the news has been bad in there. And this is one stock that's almost positive on the year. So look at the news and understand what it is. It's a representation of what's already known. GoPro, uh, this stock has been in a horrible decline. And people have been saying it's oversold, it's overdone, it's a good value and all that. The market knows these things first. The market discounts the past and anticipates that earnings or sales are weak, whatever their news was this week. I don't pay any attention to it other than I read headlines. I don't read any financial news. I read headlines and maybe skim an article at best. But, you know, everything that you need to know is represented by the market action itself. And these stocks, again, they're not going to turn around quickly. Look at look at a top in a stock like FLT. FLT you might look at it and go, wow, it's down too much. It's a good value. But look at where it's come from. This is a beautiful beautiful stage three distribution turn to stage four decline and a stage four decline is marked by lower highs and lower lows so we'll get a rally that sucks people in some shorts get squeezed maybe it goes all the way up to there but this is what's most likely for these types of stocks and if you again want to take advantage go to alphatrends.net and see the um 
uh, details for that sale. It's been a long, exhausting, and actually very profitable week for the people at Alpha Trends. Our, our best trade actually was uh, one a short in Mobileye, and this is a great story. They've got you know self-driving cars, but we got short at thirty-seven dollars and thirty-seven cents on uh, Wednesday, I think it was. We covered half of it at about this level, I think, for $1.15, and we covered the balance Thursday morning at $29.95 for a $7.5 profit.